my name's Melanie. I'm a character designer and illustrator. I've been trying to keep myself occupied these days by studying, so I thought I'd share what I'm up to. You've all read the title, so you know what this is about, but I still want to explain what I'm doing really quickly. The main goal of this exercise is to improve my use of color by studying images with colors that I like but never use, or colors that I just wouldn't normally use at all. At the end of this video, I'm going to be grading myself on how well I think I hit my goal of learning the palette, so stick around if you want to judge me and my results too. <laughs> Actually, don't judge me, just my results. I'm fragile. Some of these things I wrote were answers to questions I initially had, but others are observations that I'm not even sure will be helpful later on. The point is to loosen up, get started somewhere, and try to get into the mind of the artist. Firstly, I noticed that some of the white shapes directly correlated with the planes of his face that would be pointed towards either side. Kind of like that. I also analyzed the colors themselves, based on temperature and whether they were layered. Like how his blanket thingy is layered with warm tones over a cool blue. I noticed that blue and yellow didn't interact nearly as much as blue and red, or even yellow and red. Once that's done, I can get started on the first painting. If you're interested in reading the study pages better, I'll be revising them to be as clear and concise as possible before posting them on my Instagram account. So you can check them out there! A link will also be in the description box. Now, as I'm laying down color, I'm trying to keep the rules from the previous study in my head. 3D planes, white space, layering warm colors on top of cool colors, all that. Honestly, I think I kind of prefer how it looked in this beginning stage, where everything's a little fuzzy and more is left to the imagination. I definitely know why I decided to polish it up a bit, but I kind of also see the merit of leaving things sketchy and kind of unfigured out. Unrelated to the last topic, but related to this piece, I have a question for any other artists out there. Do you vicariously live through the makeup, clothes, or accessories that you paint? I've heard several artists' friends say that they draw clothes that they can't afford, or paint hairstyles that they don't think they could pull off, and I totally do the same thing. For example, you know that sort of outlined cut crease that's been super popular lately? Like, people who are good at makeup can do that. I think it's so cool, and I wish I had the guts to try it out, but I don't, so I gave it to her. I was really trying to push myself and give her some unique features, and some of the early sketches especially looked kind of like what a fawn would look like in my mind. Not a deer fawn, like a mythical fawn. I don't know, the big eyes, dimples, and small white nose kind of made me think of that. Unfortunately, I ended up losing track of her features somewhere during the process, and they turned out a little generic to me. And that's fine, that's totally fine. It's just because I was focused on the colors, which were the point of this whole thing. But that is something I should keep practicing so that I can multitask and keep it in mind better. Once you get the hang of it, it gets pretty fun because you feel like a mad scientist. Sometimes you know exactly what needs to be added, but to be honest, most times you're probably just experimenting and tweaking ideas as you go. Or if you're me, your lack of coordination from your brain to your finger sometimes results in a lot of Let's call them happy accidents. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, one down, two to go. This was really fun for me, honestly. It, I thought it was gonna be really predictable because it's like, oh, something scary and like complimentary colors and ooh, I don't know. Seems a little predictable to me, but I really like how it turned out. I don't know, personally. Maybe that's just me, but I'm usually biased against myself, so there's just no winning here. So a quick note, I was watching a lot of Glam and Gore when I drew this. For anyone who doesn't know, Glam and Gore is an SFX and makeup channel here on YouTube. Anyway, I was definitely a little influenced by her style when I was doing this. Her whole thing is being creepy and cute at the same time, and while this character is definitely on the creepy side, he's not that spooky to me anymore, and you'll see why. As you can see for yourself, I tried out a couple different ideas with this guy, just trying to make him a little unique. 
I wasn't really feeling any of the options I tried out earlier, so I was steadily losing direction and, to be honest, gaining desire to play The Sims 4. I didn't, but I was losing steam, and that really showed, because I started adding random things that I felt might spice things up since I was officially out of obvious ideas. Anyway, so he needed more gray that looks blue to match the reference. See, the subtleties lost me. Anyone could look at the reference and say it's a complimentary piece with orange as the most saturated color, but it kind of got tricky when it came to using those subtle blues. And I definitely graded myself accordingly, because, not gonna lie, I, I did get a little bit distracted with just trying to make it cool looking, which, you know, wasn't the point, but what can you do? And right around now, you can tell I was just scrambling around for ideas, just doing whatever felt good, whatever felt right, and I don't know. Honestly, in the end, I kind of like how it came out. So I'll shut up for a second and just let you see for yourself. So at this point, I just decided to run with the whole it's fine idea, and now in my head he's just a really stressed out ghost guy who perpetually looks annoyed, but he's doing his best. And that's all we can ask. Did I ruin it? Maybe. But honestly, it made him much more interesting to me. Um, if you caught them, even the little cartoony faces that I drew in the shadows around him have a story in my head. They're like his other ghost buddies that are constantly getting on his nerves or nagging him or something. He has to have a reason to be so stressed out, right? Aw, now he's got a cute little bug tooth! So cute! I don't think anyone would look at him and call him cute, but... See, when you're creating someone, story has to come into the plot somehow, and my stories are all kind of doofy, like me. <laughs> Alright, two down, only one left. I'm doing my best here, but I was mentally tired, and I didn't really think of the best questions to ask in the moment. I just decided to wait until they came up during the painting process. Make sure you're in a comfy, rested state when you're studying, kids. I just didn't do that because I love commitment issues when it comes to design, so I end up forgetting to sleep, which isn't great. <laughs> Moving into the painting, I was slowly coming out of that mental fog and realizing that I was woefully unprepared. <laughs> Honestly, I was really on a struggle bus in the beginning of this painting, but I don't know, at some point it just kind of clicked and I, I got it, I knew what I was trying to do. Wouldn't give myself an A for this, wait, no spoilers, wait till the end to see what grade I got, but I did alright, I'm not too bad. I honestly wasn't planning on painting anything that fit with the quote, sad artist, unquote, vibe of the reference. Sometimes it's fun, but to be honest, this time I felt that I would find it cringy and kind of forced. But as I was working, I was listening to scary stories for fun, which kind of mixed with my uncertainty that this would even work out, plus apocalyptic stress in general, and by the end, I just kind of embraced it because it was the genuine mood I was kind of feeling in the moment. Like, she looks kind of sad to me. I don't know, you might not see it. I, some people haven't seen it, but to me she's a little bit sad. Or maybe that's just me projecting, yeah. To each his own. I'm not depressed, I swear. Now, another thing that's related to this piece, some people are out here saying that a lot of the girls I draw look like me. And first of all, they're just saying that because I have an oval face and big hair, so that's not fair. <laughs> But also, I feel like a lot of the female faces I've been drawing lately are getting kind of generic? <laughs> Actually, it would make sense that they look like me then, huh? <laughs> That's starting to concern me a little bit, because at first it was a choice. 
I was taking my own reference and I didn't bother to change who it looked like because that wasn't the point. But now I'm starting to think that I should study some more diverse facial structures like I used to. I think I'll do that. That'll be good. Um, I might make a video about that. We'll see. It, it all depends. Like, do you guys like to see studies? I know on Instagram people were saying that they really preferred studies because I never posted those. But we'll see. I'll be here for a minute, so I might get around to doing that. And here I'm just adding gold accents to the hair because the gold was such an interesting part of the reference. I really enjoy adding 2D lines on top once I've already made the main painting itself look a little more 3D. Also, those gold tear things? Yeah. They always spark many joys for me. I don't know why I like drawing them, but I do. Now for the grading! Let's hit portrait one first. While I think that I hit my goal palette very easily, I would have liked to see myself try it the way I assumed the original artist, Holly Warburton, did it. Which was to only add colors, and that takes a lot of foresight and skill, since you aren't allowed to erase colors or add white, like I did here. Cause all digital artists cheat! Don't quote me on that. Um, all in all, I give myself an A- for reaching my goal, but missing the amount of risk I could and should have taken. On to painting two. I'll be honest, I was having fun and forgot to look at the reference in the beginning and that definitely influenced the color choice. I was scrambling at the end to add blue, but it didn't work as well as I'd hoped. I didn't even realize that I didn't get the exact same tones of green there in the reference until after I'd finished. That being said, I think I did match the spooky vibes that I got from the reference. And I had a great time, but that doesn't count towards my final grade. <laughs> I think I'd give this one a D barely passing as a study. Last but not least, Portrait 3. Even though some of the observations during the preliminary studying phase might seem boring or even unnecessary, it's necessary for me if I'm going to be studying by myself. If anything, I just want to have more of a game plan next time, more structure. Because this one definitely didn't have enough structure. As for the color palette, I got those gold highlights on point, which I was really excited for, but in the process I got tunnel vision and totally missed the red and green pops of color. The original reference is so pretty, I don't know, I, I might have to try this one again. I think my efforts this time deserve a C+, because the colors were definitely closer than in my last painting, and I feel like I captured the right mood with it, but it still looks like a far cry from perfect to me. Now that that's out of the way, I have a few overall thoughts. With a goal and finished product in mind, I definitely found this type of studying very helpful, and I definitely recommend it to anyone who wants to learn something specific. I'd really like to do more in-depth studies like this, actually. If you're interested in seeing those, let me know. And we're done! If you have a favorite or would have graded them differently, I'd love to know. I'm trying to get the hang of making these videos interesting for you guys, so I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time!